and I thought it was kind of disturbing and definitely wrong. And as a joke, sarcastically, I pointed out these situations and said, straight people, what's wrong with you? And not surprisingly, a couple comments have been about that saying. First one from Paul Williams. It is Number Sunday, June 4th, 2023. And on this week's edition of Sunday Sofa Time, we're talking about more people acting strange on cruise ships. Hello everybody, it really is Sunday, June 4th right now. I was not able to record a Sunday Sofa Time in advance this week because I have been traveling all over Europe with my mom, but I'm finally back home. I got back home last night. My mom is also back home. It, we had such a great trip full of so many amazing memories from the river cruise to hanging out here in Hamburg to going to London. And there's gonna be a gigantic video about the whole experience coming up here soon on this channel. Stick around. If you're new here, I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides. I travel all around the world to popular and not so popular tourist destinations to give you a very honest, unofficial look at what it's like to be there. And just a couple weeks ago on Sunday Sofa Time, which is the weekly special where instead of showing you someplace that I was traveling, I sit down here in front of the red sofa and just sort of discuss some travel related topic. So just a couple weeks ago on this segment, I talked about some really crazy, funny, inappropriate, and strange behavior I saw from cruise passengers on our long distance transatlantic cruise from Miami to Barcelona a couple months ago. That video has almost 500 comments now, and many of the comments are from some of you talking about also strange things that you've seen people do on cruise ships, and I'm gonna go through a lot of those comments today and also talk about something that also showed up in the comments that might end up getting me in a little bit of trouble, but I think it's time to just sort of discuss it. So if I read your comment here, thank you so much for commenting. Thank you for being a part of this video and this community. And 500 comments is a lot. I do try to read through all the comments because they don't show up like 500 in a day. You know, it's like, 80 on this day, 110 on the next day, stuff like that. And I try to go through them all. So just want you to know that if you do have a question relevant to whatever's in a video that I post or some question about traveling, cruising, Disney, whatever, all together, if you write it in the comments, it's very likely that I will read it and be able to answer you eventually. But now I want to cruise further into the Bermuda Triangle of bad behavior and talk about some of the things you've seen on your ships. Starting with Susan or Suzanne Gartner. Suzanne writes, I had a similar experience with towels. We put our towels and beach bag on our chairs and took a dip. We came back and our belongings are gone. We approached the young couple who was now sitting there and asked them if they saw our things. Then they said to us, Well, how do you like being treated like that? I didn't have a clue as to what they were saying. Apparently, they had come out, put their personal belongings on the chair a few hours earlier and then went to breakfast. I can only assume it was the pool attendants who removed their things. I said, we did not touch your belongings, nor would we ever do such a thing, but you're not supposed to reserve chairs for hours. In contrast, we had taken a quick dip. They didn't believe us and got loud like we were criminals. No one from the pool staff intervened. It was very unpleasant. So what Susan or Suzanne, sorry about that, is talking about is an incident I described in the last video where, well, kind of a similar incident actually where I had to tell somebody to stop taking uh, my towel because they thought it was theirs and they thought that we had taken their place. Anyways, go watch that video if you haven't seen it yet. And yeah, the whole topic of saving these sun loungers is a big deal. We all have seen people who get up and before breakfast, go up to the pool deck with a bunch of towels and books and things and reserve a whole row of sun loungers and then maybe don't go back there until lunchtime or after lunch. And I don't think I'm in the minority by saying that's not right. Yeah, it's great to have the front row or whatever, the seats closest to the bar. There's a lot of seats I think that are more attractive than others for different reasons, but 
If you're not going to be using them, then don't reserve them, please. And if you've left your towels there for several hours, and then when you show up, they're gone, don't be surprised. You know what you did. Don't make somebody else the bad guy. If I was in that situation, I would be much more polite about it, but to tell you the truth, I'm not gonna be in that situation because I don't do that. Next comment is from Lilla Buell. Lilla writes, the zit popping had me gagging. And when you mentioned the zit popping in the hot tub and washing it off in the water, that took my gag reflex to a whole new level. I banned hot tubs since I got in one once and an elderly gent stepped out and his band-aid on his big toe came loose to reveal a gnarled, fungled, black, gray mess of a toenail. But the zit popping? Never again. Ugh. You know, people, if you have an open wound on your toe or something like that, don't get in the hot tub. Ugh. A Band-Aid floating in the hot tub or a Band-Aid floating in the pool or something, that is so nasty. Ugh. A lot of these comments are basically all can be contributed to the same thing of people just not thinking about the fact that they are on a cruise with other people at the same time and they're actions and activities and behavior also affects the other people around them. It's not just about you. Next comment is from Charity Spaulding. Charity writes, oh my goodness, I can't believe that mom made such a rude comment about your dinner. As a dietitian, I probably would have made some comment along the lines of, yes, thank you, I will enjoy my dinner. All foods can be included as part of a healthy diet. I hope you enjoy your dinner too. Go back and watch the, the video from a couple weeks ago if you wanna know what this is about, but just don't comment on other people's food. I don't have the comment here, but somebody else was saying that, you know, people with eating disorders sometimes feel the need to comment on other people's food, which, you know, yes, that can be true, but she doesn't know if maybe I have an eating disorder, and in that case, you definitely don't want to be pointing out, commenting, or judging somebody's food choices for somebody who may be dealing with a eating disorder, especially not a stranger. I mean, I, what goes through people's heads? There's another comment that's relevant to that that I just copied here. It's from Joe W. Joe writes, I'd love to hear more on this subject, like what happened next? Did she look embarrassed? Was the conversation awkward after that? I almost don't wanna go on a cruise after these stories. Well, there was no conversation after that. Uh, she's talking about how this woman commented on my food. There just was no conversation after that. I gave them the cold shoulder. They kind of stuck to themselves. And I think maybe she was a little bit annoyed by the fact that we asked to share this gigantic table that they were just sitting at one end of, but there you go. Okay, the next one is wild. It's from Kiasha's World. Uh, they write, we just got off our cruise a couple weeks ago and we were on our balcony when we started seeing water. Looked up and a man was peeing over his balcony. People are so disgusting. <laughs> So first of all, I wanna say, I'm sorry, girl. I hope I didn't get any on you. Kidding, of course it wasn't me. I was thinking about peeing off a balcony. No, I, wait, I wasn't thinking about trying it, but I was thinking about how you would do this because, you know, I'm a short guy and the balcony railing comes up to like maybe about, you know, the middle of my torso here. So I would either have to stand on a chair or like, shoot up and over the railing. So I don't know if this guy had like really long legs or maybe if he was also standing on a chair, but peeing off a balcony, I think uh, we can also say don't. It's not like there aren't other options on board, right? How could you justify something like this happening? Maybe, maybe his wife or girlfriend or whoever was passed out in their bathroom and he really needed to go and just thought, all right, well, there's water down there. It's late at night. Nobody's gonna notice, but still. Don't. Next comment is from Connie Johnson, and it's a little bit different, but I thought I would take the opportunity to talk about this. Connie says, I gotta say, I'm getting really tired of your advertisement for your book. Maybe time to cut it to every other video or something. And uh, I, I wrote to Connie about this, but I thought I'd just mention this, so, if you don't know this, not only do I make videos on YouTube, but I also wrote a book called Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship. Sorry, Connie, I'm talking about it again. This is a short book of uh, stories about 
what I was doing before, how I ended up doing what I'm doing now, and then there's 10 short stories about crazy funny things that have happened to me around the world. If you wanna check that out and help support me here on YouTube, it's on Amazon right now, getting stitches on a cruise ship. So I do mention it in a lot of my videos, but you have to remember that this is my business. This is a product that I created and sell. And if I don't advertise it, then people aren't gonna know it's there. And the way that YouTube works with the algorithm and stuff like that, some of my videos, I, I upload them and 2,000 people see them, which is great. Some videos I upload and 50,000 people see them. And I have no way of knowing in advance which is gonna be a whammy and which is gonna be a 2000 uh, video. So that's why I try to mention the book as often as possible, just because I wanna get the news out there and I want people to know that this exists. So if they like to read and if they like to hear about crazy travel fails and stuff like that, that they have the opportunity then to find this. And that's why I mention it a lot. And that's why I'm going to continue mentioning it a lot because I don't do any other kind of advertising for it. I just mention it here on this channel. Next comment is from Auntie Vera Charles 50. <laughs> they write, when I'm sitting at the slots, I like to have Drew pluck my nose hairs and put them in the drink cups of our neighboring players when they're not watching. Oh, and I also like to play blackjack while I use an epilator on my bikini area. This is obviously a joke. Please let this be a joke. I almost wouldn't be surprised, but I know from other comments from Vera Charles that this is a joke. They're talking about how I witnessed something very disgusting in the casino and I also saw the same behavior on a hot tub and they're just like taking it overboard and pointing out something that obviously maybe some other person would think, yeah, this is not a problem. Why not do this? But a more normal civilized person would think, hell no. Next comment is going to create a little bit of a discussion, but I think a positive discussion. This is from Nicholas Fun. Fun boil, fun bowl. Uh, Nicholas writes, speaking about waiting in line, am I the bad person for doing this? Let's say I want an extra portion of rice, which appears to be in the middle of the buffet. Should I make the whole queue to grab that spoonful of rice? Or is it okay to just come five seconds in between two people in the line to grab this and go? Generally speaking, I feel people should queue perpendicularly to the buffet item that they want and not in parallel. This way, people wait only for what they want and not waiting and not waiting that everyone have been in front of everything. Does that make sense? Well, I I didn't understand that last sentence, but it doesn't matter. Uh, what Nicholas is saying is it would be useful or more useful if like, if this is the buffet, if instead of people like starting the line here and then walking down the buffet like this, if there was just a line for the rice and then a line for the noodles and then a line for the burgers and so on. That's a great idea. Unfortunately, not every buffet is set up to allow that because some have islands, not all of them are like a long buffet. Also, that's gonna make it harder for you to even see what is being offered because the the distance of you know the line is going to take up distance if everybody's standing like this way then you're not going to be able to get close to what's ever there to even see if you want some of it and somebody would just find a way to mess that up anyways too i personally am not a fan of if there is a long defined queue for a section of buffet, I'm personally not a fan of the people who come and just reach in and grab a spoonful of something. I totally understand what you're saying, but you just never know if, you know, how many, like, what am I trying to say? How much of a portion of something or how many different things justifies you not waiting in the line anymore? I think a lot of people waiting in the line only do want a spoonful of something or maybe a spoonful of this and two chicken wings. So what justifies waiting in line and what justifies skipping the line to just grab it quickly? Personally, I would say if there is a line, then wait in the line. All right, the next one is something I definitely wanted to point out. It's a pretty long one. It's a whole story, but I think it's really interesting and points out something really crazy. After that, I'm gonna talk about something that it's probably gonna get me into a little bit of trouble with some people, but I think it's time to just dive a little bit further into it. But before I get to that one, I wanna read this whole comment from Tracy Marshall. Tracy writes, 
Uh, the annoying thing was on Virgin Voyages Transatlantic. They had a white wine tasting class. A large bodybuilder dude came to it and complained to the staff, what do you mean there's no red wine at a wine tasting? Didn't she say it was a white wine tasting? Then he asked the staff if he could try all the wine before the class because he did not want to sign up to the class if the wine was bad. Okay, this I'm already annoyed with this dude. The staff said, oh, don't worry, it's all good wine. Then he said, well, I will be the judge of that. Then he came over and we welcomed him to sit down. I mentioned I lived in Bordeaux, uh, Bordeaux for five years and was looking forward to the wine tasting. Uh, if you don't know, Bordeaux is a area in France where a lot of wine comes from. I think mostly red wine, but I'm not sure. He asked me what I was doing there and I said I had a PhD in chemistry and that the benefit was we had research projects on the grapes from the Bordeaux vineyards and got free bottles of wine from the research funder. LVMH. Anyway, I didn't intend to annoy him, but he took his glass and he said he was going to do a walking tour of the Wake restaurant. He went up the stairs and was laughing really loud with his friends. We couldn't hear the sommelier. Then the dude came back down and asked the staff if he could take all the glasses of wine away with him as he found us boring. This guy is really a work of art. I, s I said over to him, we didn't mind he was going since he found us boring. He was taken back that somebody would say something and asked me to repeat it, so I did. And then I said, well, you were very rude anyway. I turned to the table and apologized and said that it's very difficult to piss off an Irish person, but that the guy was such a D-bag with his head up his bottom and rude. The table cheered as they agreed and we enjoyed the six bottles of wine to ourselves. Why, why, why do people act like that? This is obviously somebody who just... I don't know, his mama didn't teach him any manners. Obviously a large sense of entitlement, and I, I really don't like to use the word entitled very often, but I think this dude definitely fits the bill there. And good on you, Tracy, for saying something. Those situations do become uncomfortable, and I think that this guy is used to by being, I guess, big and muscly, kind of being allowed to do everything he wants because people are afraid of maybe telling him no, but looks like you found a good way to navigate out of this situation because I'm sure it definitely was more fun not having him there than it was forcing him to sit there. And in that situation, I don't think I could have kept my cool either. What about you all? How would you have reacted in that situation? Would you have said something to the guy or would have you, would you have just tolerated it and then let later complained to the people you were with about how awful he was. All right, these final comments, it's a group of comments about one specific thing in the video. I don't get very political on this channel. It's always very funny, sarcastic, light, and sort of, what's the word I'm looking for? Unofficial? But just to catch you up, in the video, I talked about some couples I saw doing some really inappropriate PDA things, not only amongst themselves, but also while getting pictures taken with children. And I thought it was kind of disturbing and definitely wrong. And as a joke, sarcastically, I pointed out these situations and said, straight people, what's wrong with you? And not surprisingly, a couple comments have been about that saying. First one from Paul Williams. Number one, I think an adult only section should be 25 and up, not 16 or 18 and up. Yeah, not bad. And number two, you have no right to question how straight people act in public. Oh, okay, well thanks Paul. Next comment from Jim Ward, straight people, Gay people don't do that. Black people, it's just wrong. Black, white, young or old, you're judging people by who they have sex with? Strange. MJ writes, let's not call out straight people. Those were just inappropriate people. My husband and I are straight and I don't show sloppy PDA ever. Just stay away from the absolute generalizations. It's tacky. Next comment from Carla Bunn, straight people? Wow, if someone had made a comment like that about gay people, you would point out how rude and insensitive the comment was. I really wish you were above generalizing about people. Next comment from Denise, 1965. Denise writes, excuse me, I'm grossed out by this. Sure, but I take offense to straight people. Seriously, I don't like seeing it from straight or gay people and I couldn't tell you how many times I've seen more gay PDA than straight PDA lo lately. Don't be that catty one, please. So what these people are pointing out, and these are just 
some of the comments about that. Like I said, there's almost 500 comments, so I couldn't read all of them. Those are just a handful that I grabbed, but they're saying it's unfair of me to point out the fact that these are straight people acting inappropriately. And I think, hmm, 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 who else gets treated unfairly? Maybe gay people? Like I said, I don't get political on here very often and I won't be doing it again soon, but I grew up in a world where I had to be careful that anybody would find out that I even was gay. I'm not talking about putting my fingers up somebody's butt while getting a picture taken with my kids. I'm not talking about walking through a public place while groping a woman's boobs. I'm talking about being afraid to go to school because somebody might find out that I'm not interested in women and then getting physically assaulted. Not for doing anything, just for, just for existing. There are still countries in the world where people can get thrown in jail just for holding hands with somebody of the same sex. And after living almost 50 years of constantly being worried about what somebody's gonna think of me if I let them know about my life, not even about the intimate details, just about the fact that I am not together with a woman, after 50 years of that, you just kind of get sick of it. And so please forgive me for one time commenting on it, but it's just, it's just tiring to see how this kind of behavior from, I'm sorry to say it again, but from straight people is accepted. And I, I mentioned in a reply to one of these people, how would you react if there, or, or how would people react if there were two dads on a cruise that were there with like their two young boys, like this straight couple were, Already, the fact that it's two dads raising two boys would raise people's eyebrows. I'm sure there would be people who would be looking at that situation skeptically and probably be thinking some really awful things about these two, two people who probably just wanted to be parents and have a family like so many people around the world. I'm sure already people would be scrutinizing that in their heads and to each other, if not making some comments to them directly but how would people act if when they were getting their family photo taken with their two boys, if one of the dads had his fingers in the butt of the other dad? People wouldn't be walking by and just saying, Oh, look, they're feeling silly. People would be calling security, child services or child protection agency or whatever it's called where you live would be informed. It's still not the same. It's still not fair. I still don't feel like I can be myself and be treated equal in every situation. And that's why sometimes I just get frustrated by it. So I hope that most of you can forgive me for that short outburst. Might not happen again for a while. All right, I'm gonna leave you with one more funny comment before this video ends. This is something kind of catty, kind of sassy, that I appreciate from DJ1066. DJ writes, I think your points are very valid. I get annoyed with people in the buffet. I remember one cruise, I was also standing in the line for the buffet and a person tried sneaking in front of me because there was only one of something left and they wanted it. Well, not on my watch, sister. So I gladly heaped it onto my plate. <laughs> Very good. Recently, I posted a short on my other channel called Guten Morgen about how I went to a bakery just around the corner from here and I was the only person there. There were two people behind the counter who totally ignored me. So I went to the bakery right next to it, bought something and then did a pretty, wood, pretty woman moment, walked back in front of the window, made sure they were both looking out at me and then I held up the bag of what I bought next door, kind of like Julia Roberts when she says, you work on commission, right? Big mistake, huge. So I think it's funny that there was somebody trying to cut in front of uh, DJ, obviously to get the last chicken wing and DJ was like, Oh no, you don't. Thank you so much for spending this part of your Sunday or whatever day you watch this uh, with me. Don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, it's free and it will let you know when the next video goes online here. There are videos coming up about our European river cruise, about visiting London. Also, maybe one or two more videos thrown together about certain things about the Symphony of the Seas from Royal Caribbean. And very soon I'll be announcing what my next adventure is. So make 
make sure you check back. I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides. See you later.